One, two. Swing and a drive toward right center. Back goes Robert. Back near the stands. That ball is gone. A game winning home run for Chris Burrell. Can you believe it? Listen to this crowd. Welcome back to the Brotherly Cubs podcast. I'm Zach, and this is my brother, John. We are your brothers who love everything Cubs baseball. If you enjoy talking about the Cubs, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications, and join us every week as we dive into the power, the speed, and the best team in the National League. Um, we're not doing any jokes today because we're very serious and pissed off. Um, <laughs> but really, we just wanted to do a quick video and try and be optimistic as Justin Steele was injured in the opening game against the Texas Rangers here on opening day. In the time recording, it's it's the off day, and we're excited for our game uh, to watch the Cubs live at Globe Live Field in Arlington. Um, but as, as we encounter Justin Steele's hamstring tightness, we wanted to sort of recap some of the other teams that have done really well through adversity, pitching injuries, other injuries where teams have gone on and done really well. And so there's a reason to be optimistic, even though Tyone is on the shelf with a back injury. Steele is most likely going to be on the injured list. Haven't gotten an MRI yet, but he should be on there with a hamstring strain of some kind. So the Cubs fans, you know, we need to be, take a breath, take a beat, be a little bit more relaxed, just wait for things to play out. And um, any thoughts you have on, sort of some teams that have gone through adversity and there's reason to be optimistic. Yeah. Um, last year, Zach, we had the 2023 Rays, Tampa Bay Rays. They had lost Shane Boz, Shane McClanahan, uh, Jeffrey Springs, and they also lost Drew Rasmussen. Um, four devastating injuries to their rotation and to their pitching core that really – you would think would knock a team out of it. They ended up winning 99 games. Um, and you would think that'd be enough for the division crown in the AL East. But unfortunately the Baltimore Orioles were able to top them mm -hmm. as, uh, as AL East champs. So that's one example of optimism that I think Cubs fans could take as far as dealing with injuries and overcoming adversity Obviously, losing Justin Steele sucks. Um, I know online, you know, we were... I, I found a clip of someone on Twitter that had posted um, picked a, a clip of Justin Steele on the ground mouthing to, I think it was the trainer, the Cubs trainer, that it's just cramps. Mm -hmm. So initially, it looked like it was he was, you know, just going to be a minor thing. But we're still waiting on news on the MRI. And, and this is... As of 625 um, Central Time on um, Friday, March 29th. So we're a little nervous, um, but there's still reason for optimism. Like I said, in the case of the 2023 Tampa Bay Rays, um, they had four injuries. Uh, moving on to another example was also last year as well. The Dodgers uh, lost Julio Urias, Walker Bueller, and Tony Gonsolin in part of their rotation. Um, at different parts of the year, obviously not all at once, but it was a pretty dramatic effect to their rotation. They were able to replace those three pitchers as well and have guys step up, but it was another example of overcoming adversity. So I think that's important to note. Just those two examples um, alone were pretty huge. I mean, for overcoming adversity for obviously you're supplementing those pitching staffs with a tremendous offense that the Dodgers had. The Rays also had a pretty decent offense as well. And again, you had guys step up for all three, all three of the Dodgers pitchers, all four of the Rays pitchers. So what are your other examples that you have, Zach, that would kind of contribute to this theme of adversity and overcoming, overcoming adversity, basically? Well, I first, before I get into my, I just wanted to highlight that, you know, sort of illustrate, we, we feel pretty optimistic. Uh, the reason why is because we've cracked open a couple of blue moon beers and uh, just a shout out to CHGO and their sponsor uh, Coors, uh, you know, and, and blue moon that's, we're drinking some blue moons right here on the show. 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, the the Rangers won the World Series last year uh, after signing Jacob Degrom to a massive contract, and he was out for the entire year. <laughs> so, and, and you know, in turn, with their lack of pitching depth, uh, just a reminder, they had like John Gray and Martin Perez the previous year, and I think they lost like ninety games, right? So they they didn't have a good pitching outlook. They signed Degrom thinking it all turned around, and then Degrom's out the whole year. So they relied on like Heaney and John Gray and, you know, Dane Dunning and lots of, lots of other guys that had pitched before for them. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate, Nathan Evaldi. So they relied on some guys that were good signings, but not like superstars. They traded, they had to trade for Max Scherzer. That's something the Cubs could do, right? They could maybe not Max Scherzer, but they could make a starting pitcher trade. If some of these injuries linger, Steele gets on their hamstring injury late in the year, you know, okay, you've got depth, go out and get another starter. There will be starters available from teams in the AL Central, right? That's right. the that's the division that's like, we need to make a trade. And the Cubs are in the opposite league. So it's like, hey, let's make a trade. Uh, so the Rangers were able to pull it off even without, you know, their their top pitching acquisition. And then only with half a year, Max Scherzer, who's also not even in the World Series, you know, he was injured as well. Again, relying on, you know, Eovaldi and then like Jordan Montgomery, for instance, that they relied on those two guys quite a bit. So, and some internal, internal depth did help them, right? And some other smaller pitching acquisitions did help them. So the, the Cubs do have depth. Uh, that's something they're, they do have this year. They've developed over the last couple of years that is a strong suit for them, even if it's not higher end depth. And uh, another team uh, that, that survived some adversary, ad adversity was the uh, Atlanta Braves in 2021. They had Ronald Acuna go out with a torn ACL in, in July of that year. So you're going on a run, you know, you're in a playoff chase and then your best player gets hurt and they pulled it off with like, I'm pretty sure like Eddie Rosario, you know, guys like that, uh, you know, probably even like Jock Peterson, all these other guys. So you can, you can have some, some internal depth or other acquisitions you've made. You can trade the Braves traded for Eddie Rosario mm -hmm. I believe they, I thought they traded for Rosario and Jock Peterson that year, if I remember correctly. Uh, so the, the Cubs actually traded Jock Peterson to the Braves right. for Bryce Ball in 2021. That was the year the Cubs traded everyone. It's like, mm -hmm. you're a player, you're getting traded. Uh, so they even traded Jake Marisnik. I don't know, that sticks out of my mind. It's like, it's just some guy who has no value. Right. Like, you want to go? <laughs> everyone else is leaving. <laughs> so there's trades the Cubs can make. They're in a position now where they're competing for a playoff run. Right. And so if they want to be serious about that, there's a lot of really good Marley depth. The Cubs are number two. According to MLB, I believe MLB Pipeline or those like aggregate rankings of the farm systems, the Cubs are essentially number two to the Orioles right. as a farm system. So use that. The Orioles just traded as the number one farm system, just traded Dale Hall and Joey Ortiz for Corbin Burns. I'm not asking the Cubs to go and get Corbin Burns via trade, but possibly Beaver. We talked about Tanner Scott this offseason. Rewatch all of our old videos this offseason where we talked about acquisitions. These are guys the Cubs could still get, right? The Marlins, the Guardians, any of these milling teams, if they don't do well, the Cubs could go and make a trade for bullpen, for starters. You know, maybe Tyone and Steele will still come back. You still have time. Good. So there, those guys will come back, and there's reason to be optimistic that they will. And we'll wait the news of the MRI. But for now, there's still a lot of avenues the Cubs can go to if they want to um, compete in the NL Central. And it's also a weak division, right? Right. I mean, look at the Cardinals rotation. Right. So, <laughs> so I feel pretty, pretty good about this team still. And we need to just wait some of these results, get guys back and then let, let them pitch. It's only the second game of the season. So let's right. take a beat everybody. Yeah, I agree. I think like you said, Zach, we don't know the a full news on the MRI. We're still trying to figure out, you know, what's, what's going to happen really with Justin Steele's injury. Um, is it, if it's just hamstring tightness, like we were talking about earlier, earlier, that's way better news than an actual torn hamstring sure i mean obviously he'd be out you know a couple months yeah um at least so if if that was the case so there's plenty of room for optimism even though we know as cub fans that can be tough at times to be optimistic but definitely with last year's examples we can see that there's it's possible to overcome even injuries like this as minor as minor as this is so well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us here on the Brotherly Cubs podcast. If you have thoughts on today's podcast, comment them below. Or if you have another interesting topic, let us know. 
hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, or join us uh, with the conversation on Twitter at Brotherly Cubs or Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I am John, and that's my little brother, Zach. And we will see you next week as we recap the first few series of the season. Until next time. Listen to this crowd.